Present Machine review time. La Marzocco Linea Mini review. Hate doing reviews. This might be the last review I ever do. I don't do a lot of reviews. I haven't done any reviews lately, but I'm doing this one. Let's get it out of the way. This review is biased. It's completely biased. There's no way this review is not going to be biased. La Marzocco sent me this machine and what? Let's see. Simon Sinek's Find Your Why. Peter did an organizational or tribe discovery for a company called La Marzocco. La Marzocco did a Y discovery. Any organization that's got enough willingness to want to grow enough to do a Y discovery, I, I mean, I'm biased. Not to mention, we're homies, we're friends. We go back a lot of years. I got relationships over there. There's no money involved. It's not a cash deal, just it is what it is. I love their company, I love the things they make, I'm biased, so just take that into account. When I got the machine, I did an unboxing video that's got all the specs, all the bells and whistles, everything that the machine has, so if you're unfamiliar with the machine, go watch that, go watch one of, there's, there's a ton of Linea Mini overviews. The specs ain't nothing new. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna try to figure out what this machine does really well, is there anything that it doesn't do too well, but mostly, who should get this machine and why? What, like, wh what the hell? What are you gonna do? Let's go. The Linea Mini occupies a really interesting space in the home espresso machine market. It's expensive at 4,900 bucks, $5,000 for an espresso machine for your house. But when you look at some of the things that you could compare to it, it actually starts to feel like a bargain. La Marzocco's GS3, its original home professional espresso machine, is a little over $7,000, so it's even more expensive. The Slayer One Group is over eight grand. $8,000? Y'all motherfuckers need to stop playing. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got things like the Luca M58 by Quick Mill that Clive Coffee sells. It's around 2,700 bucks. Still a dual boiler machine. So you've got this market range. What are you gonna do? First, let's talk about what the Linea Mini does really well. It makes espresso really, really nicely. I think the thing I like most about the Linea Mini in extracting espresso is that if you go to a lot of third wave specialty shops and you, you have espressos there, this espresso has a very similar feel, uh, a, a similar texture, a similar, it tastes, it, ah, this is one of those weird intangibles that's really hard to articulate. Some home espresso machines look great on paper, have amazing specs, but the espresso tastes kind of like it was off a home espresso machine. The, the body's really thin, even though it advertises it's got nine bars of pressure, it doesn't really feel like it does. There's something missing. It's, oh, I, I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. All I know is if you're used to getting coffee at specialty third wave cafes and you know what espresso there makes your soul feel like, this can make your soul feel the same way. One of the strongest features of this machine is the milk steaming. This thing steams milk like a beast. You cannot tell the difference in end texture between that thing and the strata that we have in the cafe. It's literally that good. It cranks. If you love latte art, if you're into latte art, and you're in this market, this is something really serious to look at. So cool, it pulls nice espresso and steams great milk. It probably should for 5,000 bucks. You're not really telling us anything. Any other reason I would wanna buy this machine? Um, it's sexy. It's probably, it's one of the most timeless profiles ever. The Linea is an amazing shape. It's something that looks good now. It looked good 10 years ago. It's gonna look good 10 years from now. It's never gonna go out of style. Some of the other machines, I think will have their day come and go. And that's an important thing to consider. And I'm assuming if you're buying this for your kitchen, you've got a pretty decent looking kitchen. Is there anything it does bad? Is there anything I don't like? There are a couple of things that I don't really like. The, the biggest thing that I don't like is the temperature adjustment on the side. It fits in with the ethos of the machine, we'll talk about that later, but I really wish that there was just a screen with a PID and you could push the button up or down. I had mine up against the wall at the house, so I couldn't adjust the temperature really cleanly. I couldn't see it, it was, it was just too tight. I have to pull the machine out against the wall, and you're kind of, if you don't have a good, you wanna have a good view on it, 
when you're working that click wheel. And sometimes it's a little hard to tell if you're at you know, 200 or 202 or 204, etc. I have an affinity for rocker switches over paddle switches. That's just my opinion. The paddle's there to activate the switch, so it's not a true mechanical paddle, but it does look really good, and I think that's why it's there. It goes with the vibe of the machine. I just, I just love like the rocker. As far as features go, this machine has basically none, and that's why it's so sick. That's why I love it so much. That's why it's so great. It's about the basics. Who, who should get this? Who should buy this? Someone who really enjoys the process of making espresso, who doesn't want that big buffer zone between them and the coffee. Sure, there are machines that'll do more, but how's the experience with those machines? I love this machine because it reminds me of making espresso when I started making espresso. Everything was really hands-on. We didn't have a lot of we didn't have a lot of bells and whistles. It, it was it was like a really it, Oh, it was visceral. There's a lot of different kinds of baristas. There's there's one set of baristas that wants to play with temperature profiles, pressure profiles, all, all the wacky stuff that goes on with espresso. And then there's another set of baristas that see espresso as something that's more experiential. It's greater than the sum of its numbers and parts. It's, it's a, it's a fucking. It's a feeling. Everyone should know as much about their craft as possible, but which which journey you choose to take is, is yours, and I'm definitely an emotions process guy. Honestly, I could really care less how amazing coffee tastes if it's not fun along the way. This machine is for people who wanna have fun along the way. You can get other stuff. You could get a super automatic machine. This is not a machine for someone who would buy a super automatic machine. There, there are machines that you can program everything in and it'll spit you out a cappuccino and you don't have to think about it. That's not for you. You, you get all of the things that come along with having a professional grade espresso machine in your kitchen. Sometimes it's a little bit messy. That's part of the process. You'll have to allocate counter space for a grinder, a knock box, a tamper, all that stuff. This is the life that you've chose. So while this machine is great for someone who wants to touch, feel, and experience really amazing espresso at home, I don't even think that's the best part of this machine. I think the best, the this thing was born to destroy events. This is the event barnstormer. This thing, dude, you just and throw this thing in your backpack. Not really, because it's 71 pounds, but I guess theoretically, yeah, you could do it. For just under $5,000 to have something that can live on your counter, that you can take out mobile, you can serve endless lines of people with this thing. It's not gonna run out of steam. It's not gonna run out of pressure. The rotary pump's going, it's not gonna burn out. This thing is robust. We've done tons of events with these things and it, kills so if you have a cart if you have like a little single origin bar any of these things where you need something that's relatively affordable to do that with you're you're good that is that is best value i think that machine's ability to handle anything really justifies the price point that it's at compared to some of the cheaper home dual boiler machines again i haven't used any of those but if i'm going to an event and i have to pick something to go with me, I have a little bit of pause getting something that I know is strictly only intended for the home market and, uh oh, I'm making a video. How come you're always home and I don't want you to be home? In that sense, the Linea Mini is really in a class by itself, even compared to its bigger brother from La Marzocco, the GS3. If I had to pick one of those machines to take to an event with me, it's Linea Mini all day. The UI is better on the Mini, the Steam Wand articulation is nicer, that roll on knob rather than the little joystick. There's more cup real estate on top. It looks better with most mobile setups and it's a couple thousand bucks cheaper. It's a, it's a big win. I wouldn't be surprised if the Mini is cannibalizing a lot of GS3 sales, which is 
pretty much what you want to do if you're an awesome company. You, you kind of want to kill your own cash cow. The GS3 changed what people would expect out of a home espresso machine, what was possible to have at home. And now the Linea Mini, I see as its cheaper, cooler successor. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, the GS3 sometimes runs out of steam pressure at events if it's gotta go back to back to back. The Linea Mini, for whatever reason, cooks harder. The build is amazing too. You can beat it up and it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart. You can treat it like a commercial machine. And I'm rough with espresso machines and I really enjoy that aspect of it. Should you buy a Linea Mini? I can't tell you that. Only you can answer that for yourself, but if you're thinking about buying an espresso machine, you want cafe quality coffee at home, you love the experience of making coffee, maybe you're gonna do some events, maybe you're gonna take it on a coffee cart, maybe you're gonna crush the groove, maybe you wanna support a company like La Marzocco, which I love. Little reminder, this is a biased review. You might wanna get a Linea Mini. Stay dialed, y'all, and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.